Good evening, family, and welcome back to the path. Welcome, welcome, and again, welcome. I pray that you are enjoying this beautiful November 1st, and I pray that God is blessing you in ways you never even imagined. So welcome, family. Welcome tonight. Won't you take a moment and just type your name in the chat. If you're in class tonight, take a moment, and just type your name in the chat. This is the third session of the path for this year. The path means pointing all towards heaven. It is our goal to fill you so full of the word of God. Amen. The Bible says, I believe in Proverbs 19, 2, that the soul be without knowledge. It is not good. Amen. And so the Bible also tells us to renew our minds according to the word of God. And so we come together every Wednesday for three sessions a year for 19, I'm sorry, not 19 weeks, for 13 weeks, amen? And so, praise God, this is session number three. If you are with us tonight for the very first time, would you just type, I'm here for the first time, because we would like to show you some love, of course. This is session number three. It runs from September 6th through December 6th. This is a 13-week course on how to stay strong spiritually. We will study the spiritual disciplines that make us strong. The practice of spiritual disciplines for personal spiritual growth includes Bible study, prayer, meditation, fasting. And last week I taught on habits. Amen. Spiritual disciplines is, is synonymous for habits. When we develop great habits, we will get great results. And tonight we're going to look at singing and next week we'll talk about fellowship. Now the time period that we're currently living in can be summarized by 1 Timothy chapter 4 and verse 1. It says, now the spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter times, some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. We are in that time. This course is designed to help you stay strong in this dark hour. And so understand that we are in a day and time where people are falling away from God. They just, they just are. But then at the same time, here's what's interesting and ironic. At the same time that many are falling away, many are finding Christ for the first time. Many are returning back to the Lord and many are returning back to his house, the church. And so there's a lot of interesting things going on right now, but we do give God praise that the blood of Jesus is still saving, still healing, and still delivering. So it's a very ex a interesting time to be alive. The purpose of this course is to help you continue to develop the spiritual disciplines that will cause you to stay strong and solid in the faith. We must take intentional steps to renew our mind and to develop a lifestyle of prayer, praise, and worship. These disciplines will cause you to stand. Spiritual disciplines are those practices found in scripture that promote spiritual growth among believers in the gospel of Jesus Christ. So when we look at our course outline, the very first week, of course, we introduced the course. And then the second week, we looked at the discipline of Bible study. Week number three, we looked at the discipline of prayer. Week number four, the discipline of meditation. Week number five, again, the discipline of meditation. Week number six, the discipline of fasting. Week number seven, the discipline of fasting. And last week, we looked at the discipline of 
habits. Tonight, we're going to look at the discipline of singing, which some may think that, you know, singing doesn't really play a major role in our lives, but it really is a major part of our devotion and our spiritual exercise. So tonight, we're going to take a look at that. And then next, for the next two weeks, we're going to look at the discipline of fellowship. Boy, relationships, some avoid people, but people are a key to your blessings. And then we're going to look at developing a personal devotion plan. And believe it or not, that week after that will be the wrap up. I cannot believe time is flying as it is, but time is flying. And so that's where we will be. Amen. All right. You know how we do it. Let's go on and get our 100 likes and our 100 shares out of the way. So I'm going to pause right here to give you a moment to get the 100 likes and the 100 shares done. It's something we do every week, so it's not a surprise. So let's go on and knock that out. Amen. 100 likes, 100 shares. Let's go. All right, thank you. Now, would you take a moment, if you liked it, type I liked. If you shared it, type I shared, or just liked or shared. If you did both, put liked and shared, but definitely put something there in the chat to let us know that you've liked and shared tonight's lesson, amen? And if you're here every week, you know you're gonna already like it because you know the quality of what we teach. So go on and get your likes and shares put in there. At this time also, before we get into the lesson, we'd like to give you an opportunity to give. Those of you who are members already are familiar with our, our platforms for giving, but those of you who are not, take a moment and be very generous. Amen. All of your gifts are tax deductible and you will become a part of all that we are doing. We so appreciate that. When you give, make sure you put your first and last name so that your tax statements in January, the end of January, will be accurate. It will reflect all of your giving. Amen? And last but not least, before we get into the lesson, it is sore week. Hallelujah. The women who soar are uh, have landed today. Just about all of them are now here. And it is so exciting what God is going to do this week in the women. Amen. And so we are we are grateful because we have the women's ministry, the men's ministry, the teen ministry, the young adult ministry, the senior ministry. We're ministering to people on every level of life, married ministry single ministry and uh, we are just so thankful for that so there's limited registration at the door if you weren't able to register online you can still get in on Thursday Friday there will be no more registration as we will be fully into the conference but hopefully you've already taken care of that and we'll see you there now, let's tonight, let us talk about the discipline of singing. Singing is very important in the life of a believer. Uh, in our study of spiritual discipline so far, we've examined things such as prayer, fasting, meditation. Well, tonight we're going to talk about singing. And uh, it is one of my favorite things. I absolutely love to sing. Um, and many of you love to sing as well. This is a discipline we should engage in regularly. Believe it or not, we spend nearly a third of our assemblies engaged in this activity. So whenever we come together, whether it's prayer, prayer service, a worship service, ordination service, New Year's celebration, outdoor service, indoor service, 
whatever it is that we come together for, we spend a third of our time in singing. Think about it. When you open up the service, of course, we have prayer, and then we go right into a time of singing before we do anything else. And then uh, we have praise and worship. And then before the preached word, you have what is called a sermonic selection. And so you have singing there again. And then sometimes in certain settings at the benediction, you may have singing again. Uh, when we ask our first time visitors to stay in, we sing then. And so singing is a large part of what we do. It also has a place though in our private devotions. Glory to God. Uh, I know that I normally have a song ringing in my spirit all the time. I do. Even if I'm not singing out loud, there's something from Sunday or somewhere, you know, something I've heard that's ringing in my spirit, just ringing. And so I can tell when I get low spiritually because I've lost my song. Somebody, anybody can relate to that. Somebody type, I can relate. Or maybe not, that may not be your testimony. But for me, when my faith gets low, I lose my song. And so singing is very, very helpful in that regard because when you're fired up and your, your connection with God is tight, there's music flowing through you. And it has the potential of reaping great spiritual benefits. And that's because songs minister to us. So a song can put your mind in the right space to hear the word of God. A song can lift your spirits if you're feeling down and low. A song can confirm something that's taking place in your life. A song can usher you into the presence of God. The right song can just lift you from where you are and put you to where you would like to be. Singing is very important. It really is. Somebody type, I love singing. Hallelujah. Love, 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 love it, right? How many of you have your favorite song? Why don't you take a moment right here and type the name of your favorite song in the chat? And I know right here, some of you are going to say, well, I know how the song goes. I don't know what the name of it is. Type your favorite line from the song. Go ahead and type it. Hallelujah. My favorite song. What in the world? There's so many good songs. You might say, well, I, I got a lot of them I like. But which song does it for you? For me, it's uh, Forever by Jason Nelson. And I had him come in 2019 for the uh, Women Who Saw 10th Anniversary. I just wanted to hear it live. Amen. <laughs> Forever is a long time. That's how long I love you. That's how long I love you forever. And I had him come minister that. That's one of my favorites. It reassures me of the love of God. But what's your favorite? Go in and put it. Or if you can't, if you don't know the name of the song, put the line from the song that really blesses you. Because for me, there are also songs that is just a one line in that song, which does it. Uh, William Murphy, Bishop William Murphy had a song out and uh, there was one line in that song that just really blessed me every time I heard it. He said, I haven't been perfect, but I've sure been faithful. That song, you know, the one I've got a seed in the ground um, and it's working in my, in my God is moving in my direction. You know the song. This is my season for faith and grace and favor. And in there, he says, I haven't been perfect, but I've sure been faithful. And there is a difference, right? None of us are perfect, but guess what? Many of us are faithful. We've never quit, never gave up. Even when it got tough, even when it was hard, we never gave up and we never quit. And that's how powerful singing is. Amen. You getting them in there? Come on. I see them popping up, popping up. There are literally health benefits to singing. Number one, singing lowers stress levels. Did you know that? Singing can lower your stress. Now, I have a new habit I want to share. Um, I When I'm riding in the car, 
I now turn on Sirius XM, the spa channel. And I do that because driving around the streets of Baltimore is just crazy. Oh my God, it can get really crazy. And so what I chose to do now, I drive to spa music. And when I'm doing that, it's impossible to speed. It's impossible to get all worked up. I just keep that spa music on. And let me tell you when I tell you, it calms the whole car. It calms me down and, calm, and no matter what, if, if I'm driving and there's road rage around me, I don't even feel it because the spa music, the waterfall and just the, it's, it's just awesome. So singing lower stress levels, making music in any form is relaxing. That's my point. Making music in any form is really relaxing. Singing releases stored muscle tension and decreases the levels of a stress hormone called cortisol in your bloodstream. I got to pause right there. I want you to see right here the handiwork of God. He's so brilliant. He's really, really brilliant. At the same time that you are singing and worshiping, the stress levels in your body are going down and the muscle tension in your body is released. Man, that's like having a massage. So when we're in worship, glory to God, there are things going on in our body causing us to become more healthy. Ah, it doesn't get any better than that. Somebody type, it doesn't get any better than that. While you're worshiping God, your health is being restored. How economical that God would have us release muscle tension while we're in his presence. This is why when you finish praise and worship, you feel like a new person. For me, it feels like a workout. I tell you, my, my after, after church nap on Sunday is amazing. Because church feels like a workout. And it is. It's healthy to come together. Singing, watch this. Did you know this? Singing improves mental alertness. So your brain is also impacted. Somebody type, I need my brain impacted. Lord have mercy. There's so much going on in the world. I need my mind put back at ease. All you have to do is watch CNN for 20 minutes and you will need your mind put at ease. No fault of theirs. They're just reporting what's happening in the world. But I'm telling you, <laughs> enough news will cause you to need your mind relieved. It also improves blood circulation. And an oxygenated bloodstream will allow more oxygen to reach the brain. Isn't that awesome? So how many of you knew all this was going on while you were worshiping and singing? Just go ahead and write in the chat. Put an eight in the chat if you knew all this. And if you didn't, put a five. Eight says, I knew all this. Five says, I am in awe. This is awesome. I never knew, right? So God is doing all of that. And that's why it's healthy to worship. When we have praise and worship at church, sometimes people don't know the benefit of it. And you can tell, you look around, some people are singing, they're actively involved, while others kind of stand there looking like, when y'all gonna sit down and how many more songs you gonna sing? Because they don't understand what's taking place, right? It's so important to get in on the worship, not sit there and watch, not just kind of, you know, chill out until we get to the message, but the music actually is doing something to you. And it, it, all of this uh, was familiar to Lucifer before he fell from heaven and became Satan. Uh, he was familiar with the power of music. And if you think music is not powerful, let me tell you what. A song can influence people's choices and in how they live their lifestyle. 
And many of the songs that our children listen to and some of us listen to have an impact on our mindset and our choices. Absolutely. Music is very powerful. Never underestimate it. It is very powerful. All right. So here's here are a couple of quotes I want you to know. Uh, the first one is something I say all the time. It is an anonymous quote. I don't remember where I heard it first, but it, it is so true. It says, singing is an internal massage. This is so true. Singing is an internal massage. It it literally, because I for my for health benefits. I get a massage every other week. I had one yesterday in preparation for the conference because I knew I was going to be uh, utilizing my body and my energy more than I normally do. So I had a massage yesterday to relax my body and to prepare me. And uh, external massages are wonderful. How many of you get massages? Put a three in the chat if you do them regularly. So I had a massage and on the outside, it felt amazing. I got it from the table and I was refreshed. So a, a singing is like taking an internal massage. In other words, singing goes down into the body and you saw the health benefits that we just noticed, right? Because singing goes down into the body and does all kind of great things. Singing is an internal massage. And then Miguel uh, de Cervantes said this, he who sings frightens away his ills. Think about that for a minute. Think about going through something difficult, right, in your life, and then you walk around the house and begin to sing, Waymaker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. Now you sing that a few times, come on here, somebody, and you begin to lose your fear, you begin to lose your discouragement. Why? Because you begin to focus on who's on your side and not what's happening to you. You begin to focus on who's on your side. And when you focus who's on your side, focus on rather, who's on your side, you, you, you get a shift in your mentality. It'll change everything when you remember who's on your side, right? And so music is powerful. He who sings frightens away his ills. That's why you should always have a song running through your spirit. Always. I always have a song rolling through me. Always. Always, always. And so you want to always have a song in your belly. Now, some do not appear to appreciate the value of singing. I know um, depending on your background, growing up, I, I was in a setting where they sang, but it was very controlled, very, um, you know, matter of fact. There was no room for a uh, hand clapping or hand lift you know, raising of the hands or anything like that. It was just sing your song and sit down. And so it did not give the, excuse me, it did not give the congregants a chance to integrate and engage with the music. Now we did have some people who every now and then they would holler out and, you know, but praise him or what have you. And they got stared at real good. <laughs> right? Because in that particular setting, uh, it, we were, weren't taught, no one said we couldn't do it, but when you, you know, when you made a little noise, you were looked at kind of funny. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Type a one in the chat if you know what I'm talking about. Now to the other extreme, you have people who just get carried away too. You have people who uh, you know, just want to sing and shout and carry on the whole service. And you have to say, listen, 
Okay, and, and we, we got to move on. We got to get to the word. And so there's a de there's definitely a balance. But many Christians sing with virtually no emotion. And some do not sing at all. There are people who attend service and they just kind of, they're just there. They don't engage with the uh, spirit of God, which is very sad because they miss out. Some Christians or many Christians complain because time available for classes was taken up by singing a few hymns. And so you have people who come to a setting and they just want to get into the work. I had someone tell me, I skip praise and worship. I get there in time for you to preach. Well, you skip part of what you needed for that day because the preach word does one thing and the worship does another. And the truth is, if you're not there for the worship experience, you may not really be ready to receive the word because worshiping cultivates a hearing ear. When you're a worshiper, you are more likely to be open to what God has to say. But when you just come in dry and, you know, right off the cuff, most times you're not, <clears throat> excuse me, you're not receiving what you would have gotten if you didn't participate in the worship. Some will not attend a worship service if they know it will be devoted to singing. A few years back, we did uh, once a month, we did what we called, uh, uh, was it virtual? What was the word we used? Anyway, every, I think it was third Sunday, we just had all singing and prayer. And some people really got upset. Like I went, I came to hear a sermon. Well, you heard one through music, Right. Anytime you sing, sing the word of God. So some people really just are not that into singing. They really come to hear preaching and that's it. And so they miss out on the power of music and what music can do. So singing as a spiritual discipline is of a great value and should be a habit that's engaged by those who desire to grow in godliness. Because again, songs have an impact on people. They do. Song, music literally can control your life in a good way, though. Music can control you. Why? Well, you might wake up in a, in a really bad mood, or we call it, we call it waking up in a funk, or waking up in a fog, right? And the right song will break you out of that. It'll break, it just breaks you out of that. You get inspired, you get uplifted, you have a complete shift in your attitude and your mentality, and, uh, and it causes you to grow. This is why you'll notice in most settings, there is a sermonic selection. Why? Because that sermonic selection prepares people to hear the word of God. And as pastors, we rely on that sermonic selection. That's why when, when the sermonic selection doesn't go well, it's like, Lord Jesus, now I got to get up here and lead them back into worship because what that was, was not worship. And so sometimes not, I know in our house, it's not an issue regularly, but there have been a few times where the person or persons who did the sermonic just really didn't, they didn't do it for us. And so that's sometimes where two things happen. Sometimes as the preacher, you get up and you continue in that vein and, and try to lift the people to a place where they're ready to hear. Other times, the person who did the sermonic nailed it, and you get up, and the people are in worship, and their hearts are open, and they're ready to receive, and you also join right in on that vein and flow in it. Now, sometimes, and this happens in our house uh, regularly, sometimes you get up to preach, and the people are so deep in the presence of God and into worship, you don't get to preach that day. That's the day when the glory cloud falls and there's nothing the priest can do. You just let the people go because they're in there, right? They're, because once you get in the presence of God, there's no need to pull people back out. Let them go. Amen. And so how many of you love those kind of Sundays? I call them the book of Acts Sundays. I said, well, we're in the book of Acts today. The glory cloud is falling. Can't nobody do anything. I love, love, love Sundays like that. 
So singing praise to the Lord uh, is upward first. This is the most common concept of the purpose of singing. The book of Psalms, it, the Psalms call upon us to praise God in song. And we're going to look at that in a minute. All throughout the word of God, we're admonished, but particularly in uh, the book of Psalms. Praising God in song should be a natural for Christians. Amen. And that's what I was saying earlier. And I always have songs ringing through my belly. And every now and then I'll sing it out loud, and go, you know, and just go right back in. But it should be na as natural as breathing. And I, I preached a message on this. Worship is as natural as breathing. You were a worshiper when you were born. You just, you may not have learned how to worship God yet, but you were worshiping something. Amen. We all do. We, we're worshipers. So songs flow from a grateful heart. So that's our worship upward. Amen. We worship the Lord. We, we uh, lift his name. We make known his deeds among the people. I was at, um, at, I was at a store yesterday and I was just, a uh, young lady asked me a question and I just began to minister to her. And uh, now she's coming to women who saw her and one of her buddies, you know, as a result of just, just lifting the Lord up. When you lift, he said, if I be lifted up, I'll draw. And so sometimes in our evangelism, we want to, you know, tell a person how wrong they are. You need to get right. No, 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 no. Just lift him. Let them see how good he is on you. And it will draw people. I told somebody, I said, man, I'm like a magnet. Go in the store and come out with two souls, you know? And so when you lift him and show the world how good he looks and how good he is, their natural response will be to draw to him. But by the same token, if we're critical and mean, we'll push people away. And we don't want to do that. We don't want to stand in the way of sinners, as uh, Psalm chapter one talks about. Amen. Now that that was our upward singing. Here's our outward singing. Singing is not always directed towards God. We also sing to teach one another. And so some songs are instructional. Like for instance, I command my soul to bless the Lord. I command my soul to bless the Lord. So when you sing a song like that, you're teaching the congregation, you have to tell yourself to praise them, right? That's a teaching song. And so there, there are many songs that lift him and then there are many songs that teach others how to lift him, right? And so that will be an example. So that's outward. That's admonishing one another. That's an outward demonstration of singing. And then you have the inward. Mm. Woo, when you sing to be filled and enriched. And this usually, this occurs in our personal devotion time that we're going to talk about in a couple of weeks. That, that occurs in our personal devotion time. Okay, so David wrote of the personal benefit of singing praises. David, King David, we know, wrote the majority of the Psalms. And uh, there are a lot of songs that are actually songs in the book of Psalms. And we sing them. Um, singing can be a means to being filled with the Spirit. Yes, indeed. My God. Sometimes as people are singing, they end up getting filled with the Holy Ghost. They end up getting full. You will notice after, after praise and worship that you feel very full. How many know what I'm talking about? Put a three in the chat if you know what I'm talking about. Have you ever been singing and just fill up? Now, most people, um, you know, when they're, when they're singing and they get full, they will begin to wipe their eyes. Some people will begin to cry. Some will lift their hands. Some will uh, make, you know, sounds with their mouth. They'll speak out. So people have different responses to worship. But a lot of times uh, you get filled with the spirit and it's a beautiful thing. 
And then singing can be a means to being enriched by the word of Christ. Absolutely. Uh, the best songs are scriptural. I always say the best prayers are pray when you pray the word. And the best songs are when you sing the word. Lord, have mercy. The best songs are when you sing the word because the word of God is powerful. It will, nail, it will never fail, right? So it's important that we pray the word. And I've said this so many times. Um, Psalm, let me, let me share this with you. Psalm chapter 61, turn there a minute. And verse number two is one of my favorites. Go to Psalm chapter 61. We're going to be uh, going through a bunch of scriptures in a minute anyway, so you need your Bible. But if you turn to Psalm 61, it's so powerful. And I, I'll do the King James Version of, of it. But look at Psalm 61. It says, hear my cry, O God, attend unto my prayer. From the end of the earth will I cry unto thee. When my heart is overwhelmed, lead me to the rock that is higher than I. For thou hast been a shelter for me and a strong tower from my enemy. Let me sing this for you. This was a song that we learned uh, at our old church years ago. We literally sang this song and it was powerful. You want to hear it? Type yes or no. <laughs> but here it goes. Listen. Hear my cry, oh God, attend unto my prayer. From the end of the earth will I cry unto thee. And when my heart is overwhelmed, lead me to that rock that is higher than I. That is higher than I. For thou has been a shelter for me and a strong tower from my enemy. And when my heart is overwhelmed, lead me to that rock that is higher than I, that is higher than I. Isn't that powerful? Now that's a song we used to sing in our old church years ago. And here's the thing, those are some powerful words. So imagine you're having a tough day Things are not going the way you need them to, want them to, or you thought they would go. And you begin to sing that. For thou has been a shelter for me. I'm about to go off in here. And a strong tower from mine enemy. Do you hear those words? And when my heart is overwhelmed, Lead me to that rock that is higher than I. So I have to sing that song regularly. <laughs> How about you? Do you have something you sing regularly? Because uh, in pastoring, you have, you have a lot to deal with. And so many days, not all the time, but there are many days where I feel overwhelmed by my responsibilities and, you know, just all the personalities I have to deal with and all that stuff. And so many times I go before the Lord and I begin to sing that. Why? Because I immediately feel deliverance. I mean, immediately. It lifts my spirits. Why? Because I'm going to the rock that is higher than I. There's another song. Um, I go to the rock. Mm -mm 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 -mm. I go to the rock. Y'all know that one? Yeah. Songs like that. Watch this. Encourage you to depend on God. It encourages you to depend. Why? Because it reminds you of where you can go when you can't take no more. <laughs> And then we find that his grace is sufficient 
right? And so that's why singing is so powerful. I'm getting excited in here. What is the song? Because we know we have the book of songs, but what exactly is that? It's a sacred song or poem. It's one of the hymns that make up the Old Testament book of Psalms. And in terms of the etymology or origination of the word, it's an old English word, psalm, from Latin psalmist with the same meaning and from Greek, psalmos, literally swinging of a harp to pluck, play a string instrument, a string musical instrument. In Hebrew, the word psalms, tehillim, derivates uh, div, div, from, from the root Hebrew lamed, that produces the words to praise, to shine. The root of the Hebrew words for shining and psalms includes instructions for those who intend to sing psalms. The psalmist must flash forth light. And so we have a whole book of Psalms. I just sang one for you, but there are many others in the uh, other Psalms in the book of Psalms that we actually sing. People have made songs out of them uh, because they realized that they were songs. They were hymns that were sung by the early church. Let's take a look at some songs that encourage us to sing because some people don't see singing as being that, you know, it's not that spiritual, but it really is. Psalm chapter nine, verse 11, sing the praises of the Lord enthroned in Zion. Proclaim among the nations what he has done. That's upward. Remember we looked at upward, outward, and inward. So that's upward. When you're proclaiming his goodness and you're speaking of who he is. Um, your goodness is running after, running after me. What are you saying? You're telling others his goodness is following me. You're lifting up his deeds and what he does. And you're making people aware of what he has done for you, right? All my life you have been faithful. Somebody else hears you singing that. It's like, what? Really? I want some of that, right? Psalm 30, verse four, sing the praises of the Lord. You, his faithful people, praise his holy name. Who's gonna praise him if you don't? I'm not gonna let a rock cry out for me. I don't need no rock. God has been so good. Every chance I get, I wanna declare his faithfulness. God is faithful. Great is Thy faithfulness, O oh God, my Father, there is no shadow of turning with thee. So there are so many songs you can sing to proclaim his goodness. Psalm 33, verse 3. I, oh, I love this. What? Sing to him a new song. Don't get me started right here. Sing to him a new song. You Come on here, somebody. Every day you wake up to new mercies. Don't get up with the same old, same old, same old. I, I'm just trying to make it. Things ain't working out. It's just so much. Get, get me a new song. What did he, he do for you? Not your problems. What's the solution? Play skillfully and shout for joy. Now, let me tell you why this gets sticky. It says sing to him a new song, correct? Play skillfully and shout for joy. Sometimes people get upset with music ministries because they need skillful singers and people who can play skillfully. There's a big difference between somebody just kind of plucking away at the keyboard or somebody who really is skillful. There's a difference between someone who wishes they could really sing and somebody who can really sing. And so skillfulness is needed in that area if you want to do things with excellence and if you want to do them correctly. People get very offended here when they come and they want to be a part of the worship team or something like that, but you can't sing. So we need you, watch this, get on the choir, develop your voice, or sing at your seat. You don't want someone that can't carry a tune in a bucket 
leading a worship experience because that becomes distracting, right? You want to make a melodious sound. So that place skillfully is, is very important. Psalm 47 and verse six, sing praises to God, sing praises, sing praises to our King, sing praises. Now there's another song, I know you all know this. I will sing praises, I will sing praises to your name. That's an actual song. I will sing praises, powerful song, right? What is that? That's an instructional song. It's teaching the people, I will sing praises, right? Regardless of what's happening, regardless of what's going on in life, I will sing praises to your name. And it goes on, it's like, I will sing praises to your name for you have done so much for me, right? So it's, it's a testimony of the faithfulness of God. And all through the Psalms, we are admonished to sing praises. It, when we come to church, we don't sing just to be singing. And certainly not, watch this, at STCF, we're not singing for, to the lay people get here. That's not what we're doing. We're getting the church on time and putting 100% effort into worshiping God and giving him the glory that's due his name. We're putting 100% effort. Why? Because when I call on his name, I want his 100% effort. And I'm going to reap what I've sown. See the, see the connection? See the relationship? <laughs> it boggles my mind that sometimes we don't make the connection. We don't make the connection. But that is, that's real. All right? Psalm chapter 66 and verse 4, it says, look at this. My God. All the earth bows down to you. They sing praise to you. They sing the praises of your name. All the earth. Come on. All the earth testifies of his goodness and of his faithfulness. The earth, the earth is the Lord's. Watch this. The, the firmament. God, God's work can be seen everywhere. I don't understand that there, there are some who just don't believe that God is. Because all you got to do is look around. All you got to do is look around. Psalm 95 verses 1 and 2. Come let us, look at this, come on. Come let us sing for joy to the Lord. Let us shout aloud to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before him with thanksgiving and extol him with music and song. Is that in your Bible? Please, please type an eight if that's in your Bible. I just want to know if that's in your Bible like it's in mine. Come on. I know you have your Bibles out. This is Bible study. Amen. Come let us sing for joy to the Lord. This is an instruction from the word of God. Psalm 98 verses four through six. It says, shout for joy to the Lord, all the earth. Burst into jubilant song with music. Make music to the Lord with the harp, with the harp and the sound of singing, with trumpets and the blast of the ram's horn. Shout for joy before the Lord the King. Shout! Now, this right here tells you that worship can't be silent. There are times where we have, we're quiet and we're still before him. Absolutely. But not here. The instruction is clear. Shout! Now, that shout means with your mouth. That means make some noise. Amen? Make some noise. Think about it this way. Let me help somebody out right here who's saying, well, I'm, I'm just quiet and I'm introverted and I don't like. Listen, if you, if Ed McMahon, I don't even know if they still do this, comes to your front door and says, you have won the publisher's clearinghouse. You have won $8,000 a week for life. I don't care how quiet you are. You're going to make some noise. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Dad, this is happening to me. I got to call mom. I got to call this one. I got to respond. 
And so how much more do we respond to a loving God who has blessed us in ways we can't even articulate? You ain't that quiet. Type somebody type, you ain't that quiet. Because we're going to respond to something like that. So why not respond to the Lord? Right? Somebody say, amen, I know what you're talking about. Why not respond to him the same way? Because he has been that good, has been and is that good. And so we respond to him in our praise, in our worship. And I've already shown you the health benefits that happen when you do that. But then there are the spiritual benefits that also happen as you begin to honor him, praise him, and thank him for what he has done. Then baby, he turns around and begins to respond to that. Oh my God, Lord have mercy. I, I'm reminded right now of the 10 lepers. He healed 10 lepers. Only one of them turned around and said, thank you. The other nine took what he did and kept it moving. Tell somebody, I'm not one of the nine. Go ahead and type, I am not one of the nine. <laughs> I would be that one that came back and said, thank you. I sure would. I would be the one. In fact, you heal me and I'm going to hang around you forever. That is the relationship right now that we are having. You have healed me. Oh, I'm going to hang around you forever. I'm going to wake up hanging. I'm going to wake up with you on my mind. I'm going to go through my day with you on my mind. I'm going to go to sleep at night thinking about you. Yes. Here's some more instructions. Psalm 100 says, worship the Lord with gladness. Come before him with joyful songs. And so we come before the Lord and we sing songs that are joyful and uplifting. And in don't nobody want to hear no sad stuff. I don't feel no waste time. Okay. Come on now, you're not always tired and things are not always rough. And they, so we come with joyful songs, amen? Happy stuff, right? Psalm 104, thir verses 33 to 34. I will sing to the Lord all my life. I will sing praise to my God as long as I live. May my meditation be pleasing to him as I rejoice in the Lord. Look at that. I will sing to the Lord all, the psalmist says, all my life. Acknowledging how good God is all my life. That's why I love, um, I love uh, Jonathan's song. He's from here, from Baltimore. So long, bye-bye. So long, bye-bye. Goodbye to my pain and my sorrow. So long, bye-bye. What are you saying? I came to rejoice. I'm saying bye-bye. Bye-bye. Mm -mm -mm -mm. I'm saying goodbye depression, goodbye discouragement, goodbye insecurity, goodbye poor self-esteem, goodbye unforgiveness. I'm saying bye to all of that. Why? I, because I intend to sing praise to God as long as I live. So long, bye-bye. God has delivered me from all of that, right? And then Psalm 147 and verse 7, it says, Sing to the Lord with grateful praise. Make music to our God on the harp. They mention the harp a lot in the Psalms. That must have been a, a very popular instrument back then, and it is beautiful. When you find someone that can play the harp, it's a beautiful thing. Ephesians. Somebody said, well, that was Old Testament. Come on, Ephesians. Talk to us from the New Testament. Speak to one another with songs, hymns, and spiritual songs. Sing and make music from your heart to the Lord. Always giving thanks to God the Father for everything in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. There it is again. Colossians chapter 3, verse 16. Let the message of Christ 
dwell among you richly as you teach and admonish one another with all wisdom through songs, hymns, and songs from the Spirit, singing to God with gratitude in your hearts. My God. And then James chapter five, verse 13, it says, is there anyone among you in trouble? Let them pray. Is anyone happy? Let them sing songs of praise. So this is, watch this, singing is a discipline like all the others that is to be a normal and natural part of our life. It's a normal and natural part of our life. So the practice of singing, when you sing, there's a way to do it properly. Watch this. Engage the mind as you sing. Lord, help me right here. Sing with understanding. I can tell that a lot of times people don't understand the words to the song because if they would, they would sing it differently. They wouldn't sing it standing there like a cardboard box. If you've really understood the words, so, uh, 1 Corinthians 14, 15 says, so what shall I do? I will pray with my spirit, but I will also pray with my understanding. I will sing with my spirit, but I will also sing with my understanding. If I'm singing a song, you're all I want. I'm not singing and standing there looking like I want a box of chocolates. If I'm saying you're all I want, I'm going to be passionate if I really mean that, right? You're all I ever needed. Well, if, if that's the case, you're not standing there like that. So you have to sing with understanding. And then number two, give attention to the words that you're singing. If you do that, if you give attention to the words you're singing, there's no way you're going to stand there looking like you, you fresh out the box. And then meditate on the words of the song. We usually have the words on the screen so people can see them, understand what they're singing, and really participate, right? Because we're not just singing to waste time. We're worshiping. And then engage the heart as you sing. Sing with grace in your heart. Colossians chapter 3, verses 15 to 16, it says, let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts, since as members of one body, you were called to peace and be thankful. Let the message of Christ dwell among you richly as you teach and admonish one another with all wisdom through psalms, hymns, and songs from the spirit, singing to God with gratitude in your hearts. My God. Now that song's from the spirit in that verse. You ever notice sometimes we're in worship and we just start singing something right out of the flow. It wasn't something we rehearsed. It just brand new, fresh, and in right out of the flow. That's what that means, songs from the spirit. Make melody in your heart to the Lord. Ephesians chapter uh, 5 verses 18 to 19, do not get drunk on wine, which leads to debauchery. Instead, be filled with the Spirit, speaking to one another in psalms, hymns, and songs from the Spirit. There it is again. Sing and make music from your heart to the Lord. And then uh, number three, be passionate in your singing, not boring. Because Matthew chapter 15, we know this, verses uh, 7 and 8, it says, you hypocrites, Isaiah was right when he prophesied about you. These people honor me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. We don't want our worship to be just lip syncing, just standing there singing and not meaning nothing. Amen. We want it to be a very positive time with the Lord. We want it to be fruitful. And we want to actually engage with him and feel his presence and he feel ours. Amen. I'll say it this way. If it doesn't touch your heart, it's not going to touch his. Somebody type, I know that's right. Amen. Well, I have enjoyed you this evening as usual. And I tell you what, I'm on cloud 1000 because my sore sisters are in town and we fitting to tear it up tomorrow, Friday and Saturday. Hallelujah. So pray for us. I hope all of you will uh, be there 
a lot of times people say, well, my church don't do this, my church. Well, and then when we have stuff, some of you do not support it. You don't attend, you don't pray. You just don't care. I, I don't know. You just, I don't know. I won't be judgmental. I won't say you don't care, but your care doesn't show. Amen. And then some folks will pay for a flight, hotel, registration, and go out of town to hear people say the same stuff we say. It's just crazy. It's insane. So we have a quality women's conference coming to you. God's going to use us powerfully. It's going to be off the chain. I love you. Father, I pray right now that you bless my wonderful uh, students tonight, that you keep all of us in the center of your care. And I thank you for what you're going to do in their lives. In Jesus' name, we pray. Have a great rest of the week. Uh, I'll see many of you at Women Who Soar. And of course, we'll see you Sunday. God bless you richly. I love you.